here. All right, so good morning, Freedom Team. It's good to have you guys with us, okay? Uh, every Tuesday, we're here. Uh, if you're new to EXP or newer to our group, um, you can just count on this. I, I would tell you, put this on your schedule. In fact, put Monday through Thursday at this time on your schedule. Um, when you're able to come in, you can't come into everything, but when you can, we're here. Um, you know, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, every Wednesday, we do just a collaboration mastermind, just an open mastermind um great to just come in and you know we'll get anywhere from 10 to 30 people on there and it's just talking about all kinds of stuff there's a lot of talk of course about the nar settlement and new contracts and different things we've been hashing through some of that on wednesdays um we get talking about youtube we get talking about all kinds of stuff you name it so um join us tomorrow um thursday's just a q a um quick reminder also exp con is coming up um how many guys got your tickets anybody got tickets yet for exp con yep i'm going christina's going you definitely want to get your tickets down there in miami um it's coming up here quick it's coming up quicker than we know um what are the dates on that christina do you remember it's uh it's well, during Halloween. Head. I know that because my kids are mad that I'm not going to be here during <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> so I think it's uh, it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it's like right where Halloween is. So it's right the last in that time. time. Yeah. So anyway, but it's coming up. So anyway, guys, uh, be sure to get your tickets for that. A lot of us will be there. All the Freedom Team uh, founders are going to be there for sure. Um, but let me get started here with today. Appreciate you guys being here as always. So um, okay, here we go. Christina Coco Cocolo Yanakis. <laughs> Am I close? Close. Yeah, no, that it's Christina Kokoloyanakis. And it's Kokoloyanakis. Oh, the the Kokoloyanakis. There you go. And like you said, we just call you Coco. Yep, everyone calls me Coco. Way easier. Way easier. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh Christina's been in the business for eight years and she's built a great business. Really became a top producer, a third year in. Uh mom of four kids out there in California. Uh, her and her husband. And anyway, she's just done some great stuff. And she's done a lot of training. She travels around the country doing some trainings uh, with EXP and has done this for a long time now. And uh, anyway, I saw some of her stuff and we reached out and she was more than happy and generous to come in and uh, help us out here. She doesn't benefit in any way, shape or form from coming into our group. So we appreciate you being here. It's kind of the way EXP rolls, just everybody working together. So anyway, great to have you here, uh, Coco. <laughs> yes, I, I'm and, super uh, excited to be here. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. So I know you got a lot of things going on and you got the four kids going on. And you mentioned your house is under some renovation. So we might see some kids running around in the background when they wake up. Ho so. Hopefully, hopefully not. They have <laughs> rules to stay in their room. Um, but I'm renovating my my office office. So this is kind of my recording area. Um, and then I have an office office. Like many of you, like I live in California. My house, even though it's worth a lot of money, is not very big. <laughs> so it's California. It's California. And so <laughs> I have four children and 1,600 square feet. So there oh, you wow. go. Yeah, there you um, go. But yes, but I'm really, really excited. Very good. Well, I appreciate you being here. Go ahead and take it away. You know, it's all yours. So awesome. I got my notepad ready. I'm ready to take some notes. And I always learn on these things, you know, so it's always been good. That's awesome. And, and I encourage all of you to um, really stay focused. I, I always will say, come back to me. Like if you got distracted, come back because I am an entrepreneur. All of you on this call, if you think of yourself or not, you're an entrepreneur. And sometimes our brains start going and we're like, oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. And we miss stuff. And I will tell you that I have done a very, because every time I do a training, it's the same concept, different variations of it, right? And I get people who are like, wow, I pulled this out of it. I pulled that out of it. This was crazy. This was amazing. But if you're distracted and you're not fully listening, you miss a lot of the nuggets. So there's cool stuff in here. Really, the oh. whole purpose of today is to give you oh. a fundamental understanding of what building a brand can do for you and why building a brand is so important. And I'm going to get into my story and I'm going to talk about how I've kind of changed my perspective on real estate, how I real estate differently. And yes, I've only been in the business for eight years. I hit top producer in my third year and I've continued to stay in it. So, and I don't work very hard. I work 15 hours a week and I want you to understand what's possible. Now, yes, I get a lot of people saying, well, with the new NAR settlement and everything changing, the world is changing. I'm going to tell you it's not. It is not. I sign buyer broker agreements. I've been doing them for four years. 
I get my full commission. And now with this whole settlement, I'm actually excited because I'm going to charge more for my buyers. In the past, I would get 3%, sometimes two and a half is normal. Um, but it was always a hard thing because they'd be like, but they're not charging that. Why are you charging that? And it kind of made it hard. Now there is none of that. They don't get to see what we charge anymore. And so I can say, hey, I'm worth 3% or 4%. So we're going to get into all of this. What I've been finding is it's hard when I'm in um, my slides to see the chat. So if you have a question, I, I do not mind you stopping me in all honesty. Just turn on your mic and say, Coco, I have a question. Because what I found in the last training I did last week is that there was a ton of questions in the chat. By the time I finished, we kind of ran out of time and I, I was trying to get through them all, but it was just too many. So if you have something as we're going, just stop me. Let's go over it because if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it. And so I want to make sure that we have clarity as we go. All right. And turn your cameras on if you would like. This is interactive. So if you don't want to speak or you don't want to put in the chat, you can put your hands up. I'm going to say like, put your hands up and do stuff. It actually triggers in our brain a response that we're going to do it. It's telling us, yes, I'm doing it. So if you're moving your hands or nodding your head, you're subconsciously telling yourself, yep, you're telling yourself, I'm doing this. I'm going to do it. So that's some training from um, Success Coaching because I'm certified with them as well. All right. So let's get you guys going. Okay. I'm going to move me around a little bit so I can see everything. Okay. So welcome to Mastering the Art of Personal Branding. Again, the, my name is Christina Kokolianakis. You are here because you are probably ready for a business on autopilot, right? You want to create content that actually converts. How many people tell me that they are putting countless hours behind some sort of content that can be social media, that can be mailers? Believe it or not, door knocking in open houses is still content. You still need to be able to speak to people and interact with people the right way that converts. And there's so many agents who are like, I'm working every single weekend, like they told me at open houses, but I get people's names. I talk to them. And then after a couple texts, I'm ghosted, right? You're putting a lot of effort behind stuff. You're working a lot of hours. I'm going to talk about a different way on looking at real estate where you're not working a lot of hours, but you're actually taking money to the bank. And then you want to get away from massive amount of leads. Those are not the way we want to be. You want to be really strategic with your leads. If this is everything you're really interested in, really stay focused because you're in the right place. So what does it mean to real estate differently? I coined this term a few years ago because when I started getting invited to all the top masterminds at EXP and I was sitting here going like, I'm not a top agent. It was really hard for me mentally to believe I was a top agent just because in my mind, I was like, I'm not that good. There's no way. Like, it's really hard. And as I started talking to these agents that I looked up to, that I was like, you're amazing. Like how, like, I can't even compare. And I told what I did. They were like, oh my God, Coco, like you need to go teach this. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, we, we don't do real estate like this. Like none of us do. And I was like, really? So I learned that I real estate differently. I took a whole new take on what real estate is. So I want to encourage you, as you are building your business, maybe you are brand new, maybe you're a couple years in, maybe you're 20 years in. I've helped um, agents that are 25 years in the business because as you get older in the business, business dries up as well. So you kind of fill it in the beginning at the end and it's really hard. So the way I look at real estate is this. I do not want to focus on my transaction numbers. I do not say I have to do 20 deals a year, 50 deals a year, 100 deals a year. Because what happens when you focus on just transactions, you become a commodity. And you're just all about, I just need another one. I need another one. I need another one. And what you're really sacrificing are two things, income and time. And I was there. There's a guy that I go to every time I go to the top producer event. It's hilarious. I don't ever seek him out. I find my seat. I sit down and he always runs over. He sits next to me. He puts his arm around me. He's like, hey, Coco. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, he whispers in my ear and he goes, remember, I'll always outsell you. And I was like, I know, but remember, I'll always out earn you. 
right? And that's our joke. I make way more money than he does. And I sell a quarter of the deals. So think in your mind right now in the business that you have, how can you look at it differently? How can you come outside of the box and say, okay, this is what everyone says my real estate business must be. Does it feel right to me? Does it align with me? Are we feeling good about it? Do we like what we're doing? How can I make it better for me? Now, there are people who love, love, love doing 20, 30, 40 deals. They do. They like, that's their thing. That's their jam. Okay, I get it. But if you're just like, I'm tired and I feel overwhelmed and I'm burnt out and I want to go on vacation and I want to just enjoy life a little bit. Yep. You can raise your hand if that's you. That was me. My third year in real estate. <laughs> How sad. My third year in real estate, I was like, oh my God, if this is what real estate is, I don't want to do it. Like I'm tired already. So if this is what you want, listen carefully, because I'm going to give you the tips and tricks that just get started in this route. But I need you to realize that you don't have to do it the tra traditional way. You don't need to be um, on a volume game. You need to really look at your income, the GCI that you're earning, how much you actually take home, because I take home 90% of the GCI I earn. So how much money are you actually taking home? And then are you being smart with your money in the back end? I have a lot of my money sitting in a high yield savings account that's getting me five and a half percent interest. And I'm making good money on that money, but I have to have liquid cash because you know things happen. But I also have rental properties and Airbnbs and other stuff. So I don't just spend all my money and get a new car every year or nice handbags and whatever. I'm very smart with my money because, well, I have four kids I have to put through college and I have little kids. So I have a long time before they go to college. So just keep all that in mind and take a few minutes and just kind of jot down what could I do different in my business or have a different look at my business that would change everything for me. The promise today is that you are going to get the fundamentals to jumpstart your brand and your business that you want. That is key. What does it take to build a personal brand? A lot of agents think a personal brand, and I know this word is getting thrown out there way more now, but like a lot of agents will say, it's my headshot, it's my colors, it's my font style. Well, that's like just fundamental stuff, right? When you come to a personal brand, I want you to think of it like this. It's really how someone perceives you when you leave the room, okay? You are talking to people everywhere. I call it sales copy, but if you're not in marketing and you don't know the word sales copy, it's the words that are on the paper that you read that entices you to make an action. When you are meeting with someone live and you're at a grocery store, you're at a dance competition, you are in a listing a appointment, the words that you're using are as just as important as a sales copy on the paper. If you're not using the right words that entices the emotion to buy, that's probably why you walk out of a listing appointment or a buyer consultation or whatever it is. And you're just like, oh, I don't think they're going to take me. I don't think they're going to go with me. You already know, like you kind of already know when you leave it. And that's because the words you were using didn't live up to that. So at the end of all of this, I'm going to talk about how to become irresistible. Becoming irresistible is a process. So I will talk about the fundamentals of it to give you an idea around it. But understand that you need to be building a brand. There is a lot of talk about brands that, oh my gosh, I need a million dollars to do it. I need this. I need that. No, you don't. Really what you need in a brand is you need time to sit down and figure out what you want in your business and how you want to show up. Because branding, I always talk about it has to align. If the branding doesn't align with you, then there's a disconnect. So here I am with my team, right? Especially on my coaching and training side. And I don't like the colors and I don't like some of the feeling of the stuff. And I was talking with my team and I was like, look, I want to be a little fun and playful, but I, I'm kind of a little bit more of a um, professional person. So it needs to look clean and modern because when people meet me, they're like, you're so bubbly and you're so nice, but then my content almost looks a little stark, right? But I can't go super crazy on things because I'm not like that person who's like, oh my God, how are you? that's not me. I'm bubbly to a degree. So you have to make sure when people see you in the outside world and they meet you in person, 
you're the same person. And that's why a lot of time with social media, it, there's a disconnect and it doesn't work. Besides the words you're using, if you're showing up one way on social media and then you come into a listing appointment and you're dry like this and you talk like this and you're like, how are you? But your social media is like, hey, everybody. Like, they're gonna be like, whoa, who is this person? It's not the right people. So really think about your brand as your business and how you want it to move forward in, in your career, right? I'm gonna give you five key steps that we're gonna go through that are really just gonna jumpstart everything, okay? So one is know it works. Two, find your words. Three is find your ICA, your ideal client avatar. Four is find your niche. I threw in a bonus on there, how to say no. And then build an irresistible brand, okay? So first is who am I? Who is Christina Kokolianakis? And I'm gonna share my story so you understand this works. So like, like you heard, you know, I've been in real estate eight years. How did I get here? I have an undergrad in international business with an emphasis in finance, and I have a master's in taxation. I used to work for the big four accounting firms. I was super excited. I'm really good at reading law and I got my master's and I was like, this is amazing. I love it. I'm going to go do it. And then I did it. And when I was at the big four accounting firm, it was cool because I actually was a consultant. So I got to go out to big companies and work there. But what I found is I was better at selling the company than the partners were. So the partners would bring me out to sell the services. And then the company, the person I was speaking with, usually an executive was like, hey, it's fine as long as she does the work. So I was like, okay, I'm getting a taste more for sales. And I'm like, oh, I like this. Uh, but then I realized I hated doing the tax work because I was in a room with no windows and binders up to here, which is not my personality, right? So then I went into corporate for a little bit, didn't like it. Then I went to outside sales, took off, exploded, did really, really well in outside sales, had two kids by then. Um, and what I found is I was really good that my managers kept getting um, insecure about me, that I was going to take their jobs. And they started pushing down pressure on me. I had a higher quota. A lot of things were happening and I just wasn't loving it anymore. By that time, I lost my third child. So I was 30 weeks pregnant when he passed away. And that was the moment in time where I was like, what am I doing? I'm working from, basically I'd get up at six in the morning. I would put my two kids together, get them all ready for preschool or wherever they're going, daycare, lunches, all that. Get them out by seven, get to the office by 7.30, work until six, or work till 5.30, then rush every day to pick them up by six. So I wasn't charged. Dinner, bed, repeat. It was horrible. I was like, I never saw my children. And then by the weekend, we were so tired that I was like, oh my God, I don't want to do it. And sometimes depending on the job I had, I had to work on the weekends too, but I couldn't control it and I couldn't regulate it. So my husband was like, why don't you try real estate? And like everybody, they say, well, real estate's one of those things. Nobody makes money in real estate. My parents were so mad at me. They wanted to disown me that I was going into real estate. My husband is an amazing man. I just celebrated my 19th wedding anniversary with him. I've been with him for 22 years. Thank you. Thank you. And he just said, look, we both, we both lost, lost a child, right? It was hard for both of us. He said, go try it. He's like, what are you losing? Just go try it. And after a year or two, if you can't make it work, go back into, go back into sales. Like you have that option. You know, they love you. They want you back. Go for it. So I did it. And I got my license my first year in real estate. Um, I was at one of the biggest brokerages in my area and I was rookie of the year. Now, by that time, I was super, super pregnant with my third living child. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I didn't even think I was rookie of the year. But here's the problem. My first year, I was rookie of the year. I outsold a lot of agents, even agents who've been in this business a long time. But I looked at my paycheck and I go, I made $50,000, really? Like that's all I made? I was like, okay, coming from, from corporate sales, right? I'm thinking they were offering me jobs with a base pay of half a million dollars with commissions and everything I'd make over a million dollars a year. And I'm thinking, I got $50,000, really? I ran everywhere. I worked 200, I worked, I would, drove 200 miles a day. I worked 60 hours a week. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna do better next year, right? Baby's a little bigger. I took them everywhere I went. Next year, outsold everybody, made $50,000 again. I was like, what is going on? Like, this is ridiculous, right? You should not be working so hard for so little money. So my third year in real estate, I said, all right, all right. I told my husband, I was like, 
either something has to change or I'm going back to outside sales. I was like, this is ridiculous. That is when I decided to real estate differently. That is when I made the choice. I said, I'm not going to run to any appointment, to any buyer, to anybody anywhere. I'm going to be very specific, very strategic on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Okay. And remember, I have a little baby, like literally a little baby who was always like tucked into my little carrier all the time with me because I didn't have the money to hire somebody. So I said, okay, what can I do to make this all work? My third year in real estate, I made over $550,000 in GCI that year. Third year, right? I step back because you always have to step back after the year. It's really hard to look when you're in action to know what you're doing. And I said, okay, what did I do that was so different? I really focused on who I was talking to. I stopped working with everybody and anybody. I already knew the contracts. I knew what to do. I knew my pitch, all that. But I started refining everything. And we're going to talk about finding your ideal client and your niche. And that's where it starts. That one change exploded my business. So by my third year, my business exploded. And I've been doing that since that time. And I've only gotten better and better. This year now, I'm finishing up my eighth year in real estate, right? I'm going to be over $500,000 again, but I choose what I want to do. So I was just traveling the country speaking for most of the summer. We went on this massive road trip with my kids. The summer before, I was in Greece training real estate agents on how to do a buyer broker agreement all summer. Like literally from the day they were out of school, from the day they started, I was in Greece. I travel around, I speak, I do all sorts of stuff. I take off holidays. I don't work basically November, December, and half of January. And I still make a lot of money. So understand what's possible by really looking at how you can change things. And what I realized is, through all of this, an irresistible personal brand is the most effective way to easily attract leads ready to work with you so you can build the life you've always wanted. This is the fundamental shift that I want you to really understand. And this is not hard. It takes time, but I am helping agents see results within weeks, like quick results. So it just starts taking time to hone in and changing everything. Now, this is up here because this is important to understand. The founder of EXP is even saying that you need a personal brand. If you look out there with a lot of other top, top real estate agents, it's very hard to hear it. But there's a few others saying, where's your brand? Get a brand. It's time for a brand, right? And a personal brand is how you want to stand out in the world. So to become irresistible, what does that really mean, right? You want to be irresistible to the right people. And that's where a lot of real estate agents are struggling. They are saying, okay, that's fine. I'm going to help. Like I hear this all the time. I'm going to help people do a rental. Perfect. I'm going to help people um, uh, do this home that's 200 miles away. Perfect. I'm going to help people buy land. Perfect. It's all of a sudden we've become, we can do everything. Oh, sure. Someone says, can you do this? You're like, sure, I could do that. But should you say that is the question, right? So finding your right, right words, it's going to help you or hurt you. So as I traveled around the country, of course, I had to go to open houses. I looked at houses all over. We calculated yesterday that we drove through. So we did a road trip. We drove through 13 states. We actually were in 10 states um, traveling around, meeting with people, all sorts of stuff. So I've seen homes pretty much across the country. And what I found is there's a lot of real estate agents doing open houses who are talking themselves out of buyers. And I want you to hear this. So if you got distracted, come back to me because it's really important to understand. If you're at an open house and you're saying things that someone's not even interested in hearing because they didn't ask a question, you may be talking yourself out of a deal. Okay. It's really important to understand that. That's the same thing in a listing appointment, same thing in a buyer consultation. If you are just rattling off stuff, I'll give you an example. When I first started in real estate, 
Um, my average sales price was $600,000, okay? Now my average sales price is 3.5 million. I've increased that, which gives me more money and I've increased my um, commission. So now I get 4% on each listing. This is how I do it, right? But I remember I had a four and a half million dollar listing. They signed everything. I was so excited. I think it was my, it was in my first or second year. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be a big one. I got this. So then what did I start doing? Blah, 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 blah. I start talking and I go, oh yeah, yeah. You know, you've had the home for 30 plus years. You bought it for 300,000. Now it's worth 4.5 million. You have capital gains tax. Let me calculate your capital gains tax for you. It's not our place to do it. And I was thinking in my mind, the more I educate, the better it will be. Because what are we taught? Be the expert, educate them, help them. Well, guess what I did? I talked them out of selling their home because they realized that they were going to pay almost $800,000 in capital gains tax. They're like, we'll die in the home. We're good. We don't need to sell. And they canceled the listing agreement. I literally had a signed agreement and they canceled it. And I walked out of there going like, what did I just do? So I'm a big believer. You do not want to hold back important information that is relevant to a sale or a transaction. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't need to educate them on everything in the world if they're not asking questions by it. Some people will say, you should tell them anyways. And that's your choice if you want to do that, right? I tell people now that they should speak with a CPA when they sell their home to understand all the aspects of selling their home. I leave it at that. If someone goes further and does it, that's their choice. But I've told them they should do that. So Think of the words you're using, how you're using when you show up in social media. Here's another thing I hear a lot of people asking me. Coco, how did you go from 600,000 to 3.5 million in such a short amount of time? And I said, because I watched the way I use my words. So if you want to jump up into a different price category, but you're only talking about FHA and you're only talking about this special program and that special program, and it only speaks to first time home buyers who have no money, what do you think you're gonna get? First time home buyers with no money. You have to understand that. So many people come to me and they're like, oh my God, I, I can't, get. one person was like, I'm the rental queen. And she's like, I can't get out of doing rentals. And I was like, well, what happened? And she's like, I don't know. Like I did one, then I did two. And then I did this. I said, well, let me look at your social media. And I was like, you're the rental queen because all I see in your social media is, hey, this rental, that rental, no, these rental tips, this rental tip. She kind of created herself. She was like, oh my God. She goes, I didn't even realize I did that. And I was like, so we're going to, now you kind of have fundamentals because you've already done it. We're going to shift you. You're going to be the luxury queen. You're going to be the golf course queen. Whatever it is you want to pick as your niche, we're going to move that into, and it's going to take a little time to build it up and go, but we're going to make that shift so you're not just doing rentals and making no money. So really think about those words. Go back to your text messages and check out how you're talking to people. Building a brand just on the fundamental start you're going to see 60 to 70% higher lead conversions. I'm getting about 95% lead conversions. So how, let's talk about leads for a second. How many of you, and you can raise your hands because I want, I'm going to go back to the full screen because I want to see everybody. Raise your hand. How many of you are working with 30 leads a year? Everyone at least should put their hands up at least 30. How about 50, 100? 200, 1,000, right? A lot of agents are like, oh, I need the, I need a big pipeline. I need more leads. I need more leads. Here's the problem. If you're getting muddy leads, which I just did an Instagram post about it and I have a YouTube about it. Basically, they're leads that are touched by Zillow. Uh, they, they go out in the world. They put their name in all these forms trying to get someone to give them information about a home. They're muddy because they've been touched so many times. They're not committed to you. They don't see your value. You're not worth anything. You're a commodity. I can go to this store or that store and pick it up. I'm not going to pay a premium for it. Here's what I've done. I work with no more than 20 leads a year and I close almost all of them. And the reasons I say almost, 
because we always need a little bit, right? That fluctuates. But because my specialty is buying and selling at the same time, I help them buy, I help them sell, and I charge a premium, which makes me as much as doing three deals. So for every one lead, I get two sales out of it and I make as much as three. Be creative in how you look about it. Look at it all because as you get better, your lead conversion is just going to go higher and higher. And as you build a brand, it automatically starts going higher. So really consider that. Carl, I love this quote from Carlos. I'm going to move my little thing a little bit real quick. So we don't want to be something for everybody. We want to be everything for some people. Just keep that in mind. If you're trying to sell everybody and say, hey, this is what, um, just moving you guys around. So if you're just like, hey, I want everybody all over who does these different things, you have a really hard time knowing what they need and how to give it to them. If you really narrow down your messaging and who you want to talk to, they start listening. I don't cold call. I don't door knock. I don't do mailers. I don't even have social media. I didn't even grow this on social media. It's just how I talk to people and how people hear me that they're like, I want to work with her. Now people are finding me because I'm building my social media for my coaching and training. I get a lot of people who are like, I'm watching your YouTube videos that are training real estate agents, which is like baffling to me. And they're like, I'm watching your YouTube videos. I'm seeing your Instagram. Wow, this is amazing. Will you help me? Like you don't know what they're seeing, what they're consuming, but you have to talk directly to them. That's the key. So if you were to master this, what impact could it have today? So some You can either post in the comments or if someone wants to unmute and let me know, I'd love to hear. Don't be shy. Anybody? Decent time. What was that? Decent time. Yes. Absolutely. Anybody else? Uh oh, I can't hear you. Let me see. Joy, <clears throat> you, you got some? Sorry, you yeah. Sorry, you muted yeah. yourself. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying that they come to you instead of you having to chase and come to them. And like you, like you said, you do a lot less work and so much more work. Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. They see you and they come to you. And so just this little change that you make tomorrow, like by the end of this call, I hope everybody has their notes and takes 10, 20 minutes after this call and says, what can I change at this exact moment today? that will change everything for me. What am I doing wrong? Even if you just picked one thing, I'm gonna give you a little homework at the end of this. But if you were like, I just pick one thing to change today, that's what I want you to do because it makes that much of an impact. So step three and step four, right? We're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about your uh, finding your ICA and finding your niche. I also have a bonus in there, which is learn to say no because too many of us are like, sure, I can do it, sure. And you have to know that when you can say no to a client, it is, I know it sounds weird, but this is the most amazing feeling. I just cancel the client. I cancel the client. Not a, I never get ca clients canceling me, but I've canceled on many. And so you have to be okay with that because when you say no and you keep in alignment with yourself and what you wanna work with in your niche and your ICA, then what happens when it's all together is the world opens up and you feel good and you're happy and you have all this positive energy and people start coming to you that fit you. But once in a while, you get stragglers who come in that aren't really the right ones and you got to be able to say no. So we're going to talk about identifying your ICA as I go with your ideal client avatar and your niche. Remember this, they must mesh together. They have to. I just did this extensive training in my training program that I have. It was two hours long and we were just going at it and talking and helping everyone through it. Because if you say that um, I want to work, let's say luxury golf courses, but you're like, but I really want to help people who are struggling. So here's someone, this is what she told me. I want to do luxury golf courses. I really want to get into the luxury game. And I was like, okay, so who's your ICA? And she's like, 
well, I feel like I really should help millennials who are stuck in their parents' home and they're living at home and they're struggling to buy because they don't have the money. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. How are they going to afford it? First of all, how are they going to pay you? Second of all, how are they going to afford these luxury homes? So you have an ICA and you have a um, niche, but they're not in alignment, right? So if you're talking to one, you're not going to be selling in the other. So when you pick who you want to work with, you need to be able to mesh them together. So here's where you start. If you have past clients, look at your past clients. This is what I do. I kind of do a T-chart. And I say, who did I love? Who was not great? <laughs> who would I work with again? Who would I not? And you want to start there because understanding what you liked and didn't like is key. I work with buying and selling at the same time. My specialty is really my, I, my ideal client, right? They have a family, typically two little kids. They have a dog. They're looking to buy up in a luxury area, but they already live. They live in one of the buy-up neighborhoods. Um, they usually work a tech job. They make a good salary, but all their money comes from stock, right? So it's very specific. And I'm culture specific because for some reason, I'm exceptionally good at working with individuals on visa from India and China, which is funny because everyone's like, you're neither of those, <laughs> but I'm really good at it. So I look and I focus on that. And I said in the past, right, I don't want to work with certain people. What I've been doing a little bit more of that I'm not loving is I'm getting the older group, which is nothing wrong. And they're typically, you know, 75 um, ish years old, they're looking to sell the home that they have, which is worth a lot of money and buy into a senior community. I've done it several times. So I'm like, yeah, it's fine. This is remember I talked about saying no. I've done a couple of them. I'm doing one right now. And I just keep telling my husband, why do I keep taking them? It doesn't fit with who I am. And the problem is when I'm doing what I do because I renovate homes, right? I bring in my contractors. I do a massive renovation. I sell the home for half a million dollars more than it would have sold. And this is all with the seller side, right? So I'm like, I come here, they don't have the money. They're very particular about a lot of stuff. It's really hard for them to pack and move. It's, it's hard on my groove that I get into. So I'm not going to be doing as much of those anymore, right? I'm going to try to really weed them out and just not do anymore. So if you have past clients, look there. If you don't have any past clients, create the one that you want. Think about what you love. Just because you're brand new, I'm going to put this here. You do not need to work with first-time home buyers. I am 100% serious. I don't know why everybody who starts a real estate feels like that's where they should start. You don't have to do it. I did it for two years, right? I had a whole cool like um, live workshop where in person people would come to. I was at a hotel and I got a ton of leads from it. It was amazing. I did really well at it. But after a couple of years, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to tell any more people how to do real estate. Like it was so much, it just became overwhelming. You don't have to start there. You can start in luxury. Yes, you can. You can just flat out start in luxury, but you have to think about where you want to start and who they look like. Be very clear and know them exceptionally well. Here's what you want to do. You need to create a story around how they live, how they show up any internal problems, external problems. You need to understand this because you want to speak to it before they even ask you about it. You've got to know it that well. And look, are you going to know everything right now? No. How it works is you're going to start with a fundamental understanding of it. Then as you go and you try and you test and you try and you test, you start learning. If you're not learning from it, you need to be. Because you can put a whole bunch of stuff out and if it's not converting and if it's not working, you're putting a lot of stuff out for nothing. So you need to make sure you're tweaking it and seeing how people are reacting to it. That's really important. You want to know who they are looking for to solve their problems, spend their time with, what's their version of success look like, right? How do they perceive problems? Do you like people who are just really easy to work with? Or do you like people who are very analytical and they have to analyze stuff? You have to think about all these things. And then the big one is, who are they looking at talking to before they find you? Because everyone always asks me, how do you find them? <laughs> you need to know where they are before they find you. That's the way you're going to find them. Now, when you narrow down your niche, right? So you've already thought about the person you want to work with. 
when you, and you can give that person a name, by the way, a lot of people will, will name their person and they kind of give this whole backstory. It's like you're cre creating a story around them. When you figure that out, you can figure out your niche and narrow it down. Some people will start with a niche and say, I really want this area. And then they get the ideal client. So whatever feels right for you is fine with the niche we need to make sure that you are going very deep. So you can be broad and broad. You can be narrow and broad and narrow, narrow. If you think of it like a triangle, I want you to get narrow, narrow. If you're like, I want to do, like, I want to do luxury home. What kind of luxury homes? Do you want to do golf course, lakefront, ocean front? Narrow it down. It will not hurt you. Too many agents are so afraid. And here's where you're losing all your time. I'm going to go sell this home 50 miles this way. I'm going to sell homes 100 miles this way. I'm going to sell this condo, this townhouse. I'm going to sell over here. I'm going to sell over there. Well, here's the thing. Your brain is switching gears constantly. One, that's a power drain on your system, on your body. And two, how can you be the expert if you're doing one townhouse or two townhouses every year, and you're doing one farmland, and then you're doing one lakefront, how are you the expert in it, right? You're not helping yourself. You're better off to really niche down and be like, I am this person. So when I meet people, I literally flip out my card and I'm like, I'm the buying and selling expert. You got to talk to me. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yes. And on top of it, I renovate your home. So if your home needs anything at all, I do exactly what it needs for very little money and I get 300, 400, sometimes half a million dollars over asking because it's that good. They're like, wow, okay. But I'm specialist on. Now, I do drive a little bit more around because the way I've built my business is I go where my clients are, but I will not go 200 miles, right? I think the farthest this year I did was in San Carlos, um, because he was actually a really good friend of mine. He was an agent at EXP as well. And he asked me if I could help him. And so I did that for him, right? But typically I stay in kind of a pocket and it's certain areas where the homes are more expensive. And that's just where I'm known. So figure it out, go really deep. At the end of all of this, I am going, I know time's kind of running by, so I'm watching that. But at the end of all of this, I'm going to give you my Instagram account. I give this to everybody. You are welcome to DM me on Instagram and say, here is my niche. Here's my ICA. What do you think? This is what I'm doing because here's the way I see it. If I'm helping all of you to be elevated, no matter what brokerage, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, it elevates the real estate industry. When the industry is elevated, guess what? We're all elevated and I want us all to be elevated, right? It's really important. I'm going to give you a quick example of how you can kind of perceive your story. So you work with seniors who want to downsize, but not just any seniors, wealthy seniors who have luxury homes and are looking for luxury senior communities to move into. Now you will become the senior community's expert, creating videos about each community and what they have to offer. You will create a senior community information guidebook right now you're the expert on it, to give away. But then you'll also talk about how important it is to fix up their primary home for sale and that it's better to buy first, get settled, than sell their old home. They may have money to buy first. If not, you have special programs, right? So I want you to be this clear and this creative because when you think about it, then you can think how you can support your brand to make sure the people are getting everything out of it. So in this one here, because time's running out, post in the comments, all right? I want to see the in the chat. I want to see the chat number go up. What is just one thing you would add to your niche to see a better return in your business starting tomorrow? So take a minute, type it out. Because remember, if we're not making the actions, we're not going to do anything about it. And I want you guys to do something. Mm. So here's the bonus. Say no. Saying no, like I talked about, will change your business forever for the better. You have to be able to know that you're not going to lose business long-term. I said no to this client that I canceled. I sold him his home, by the way. And here's what's happening. He wants to buy a short-term rental. And I used to do investment properties. I have a time my own, on my own. So people are drawn to me because of that. They're like, you have a really good Airbnb making you a lot of money. You have a whole bunch of other rentals. How can I get into that? The problem is he wants to do some shady stuff that he sees on the internet. 
I've talked to my brokers. They're like, we can't do it, which I know we couldn't. I've just like double checked it all. And I'm like, look, I don't want to do those things. I can't do them. I will help you buy a regular way. And then his comment was, okay, well, I'll use a different agent. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have you make an offer. Well, now what do you guys see? There's a legal issues. I'm going to go to mitigation now because he's putting an offer with another agent. And then I'm going to put an offer again on the same home. That's not, not good, especially since I have a buyer broker agreement with him. It's, it's all messy. I decided instead of worrying about a $800,000 home where I'm going to make two and a half percent on it, it's not worth my time. So I canceled with him. Okay. I'm focusing on the deals. Like right now I have a listing coming up where it's going to sell for 2.1 million and I get 4% just to me. I'm going to hang out with that one. So I want to make sure you really think about the deals you're working with. Don't assume someone's going to make you a lot of money. Like I have agents who will send me messages and say, oh, they're giving me, they're like a $4 million listing. I'm going to spend all my time. And then I read their text messages when I'm coaching with them. And I go, but they're not even going to buy with you. And they're like, how do you know? I'm like, you got to read between the lines. It's all there. I'm like, send this kind of message. I tell them exactly what to write and it'll validate it for you. And as soon as they send that message, they're like, oh my God, you're right. I spent months with these people. You have to focus on people you know who are actually going to sell with you, buy or sell, however you want to look at it, and who are committed to you. That's where you have to focus your time. The rest can go on a CRM and a drip on other things, but you got to focus where the money's going to be made. The rest is just the rest. That's how you really save your time. Don't make the mistake. I love this picture. What is he doing? He's cutting himself off. So as he cuts the limb, he's going to fall. Don't make the mistake that so many agents are making. You don't need more leads. You don't need to do more business. You need to get very specific about your business. You need to really, really refine it. With the whole NAR settlement, if you don't want to do buyers, I get it. But I honestly see buyers as a gold mine, like a gold mine right now. Because in the past, they would display 2.5%, 3% on Zillow, Redfin, everywhere, right? So they saw the commission that we were getting and they were like, oh, this is your commission. Oh, I want a rebate. Oh, I want this, whatever. It was hard. We're on the listing side. That's not displayed. And you can go in and show your value and be like, this is who I am. On the buyer side, all that's going away. I don't know why everyone's so afraid of it. You have an opportunity now to stand up, show your value. Tell them exactly what they're going to get, how amazing you are, and they're going to love the fact that they have you. The 4% listing I have coming on, she's like, no, 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 Coco, I trust you, whatever you're doing. I told her I'm painting her house a dark gray with a black trim, right? Because I'm a designer. And it's really funny. Her husband rolled his eyes and she slapped him. And she was like, we listen to Coco. She's the best. Don't you want your clients to say that about you? right? That's really, really important. So don't just fumble around with a ton, ton of leads running everywhere. Get really, really focused because if you don't, you're going to be one of these statistics. In the first year, 75% of real estate agents fail out of whatever is left, which is crazy. In the second year, 87% fail. They're failing because they don't have the support, the help. They're everywhere. There's an agent I've been talking with for a while now. She drives 200 miles. She has a little daughter and she's burning out fast. She's making good money. She does about eight or nine deals a year. So think of this, 200 miles a day. She's working every day, night and week. And her husband who has a corporate job drives her around because he's afraid she's going to kill herself because she's texting and calling and everything while she's driving. So he's working in his car while he takes her to appointments. And she's only doing like eight or nine deals a year. Okay. I work 15 hours a week. I make a lot of money and I do about that many deals. Right. So just keep that in mind as a perspective when you're looking at a lot of this. I love Steve Jobs. Get closer than ever to the customer. So close that you can tell them what they need well before they realize it themselves. You need to know their problems. That is where your ICA comes in. Understanding who they are is fundamental to everything you're doing. That's when you're sitting in front of them. My clients see me as the expert, which I'm going to talk about in one minute, the irresistible part, because I'm talking to them about their problems 
before they even address it to me that it's a problem because I already know their problems, if that makes sense. You'll get a lot of that through practice and continuing, but that's important. So hold your hands up. If you're making, are you making this mistake? So hands up on a scale of one to 10. I hope everyone has 10. Are you committed to fixing it? Yes. Put your hands up. Yes. You need to be committed to fixing this. It's going to change your life, I'm telling you. So we've already gone over almost all these steps. We're gonna talk about becoming irresistible. I have created the agent branding framework. This framework is just the fundamentals to give you an idea of what irresistible looks like and how to get there. So look at this, just take one quick minute. Are you nice? Are you an amateur? Are you arrogant? Are you irresistible? If you're saying irresistible, because someone was like, I'm irresistible. I was like, are you really? Because it's very hard to become irresistible. But if you are, I'm going to give you kudos, okay? Where are you in this chart? Now let's go over it, okay? Most people land in the nice or the amateur. And this could be two years in the business to 25 years in the business. So it's just how you are perceived and how you see yourself. It comes with trust and expertise. If you create very little trust, and this, by the way, everyone's taught to mimic, mimic, use the same words, right? Lean in when they lean in, lean out when they lean out, cross your legs. We're all taught that stuff. That's basic sales 101. The problem is this. If you try to do too much of that, or you're the one who's like, oh, I'm going to like chat it up about personal stories and become their bestie. And then I'm going to be this great person. They're going to love me. If you still cannot build the fact that you're an expert and build up the expertise, you're just an amateur. So if you build a little bit of trust and you only have a little bit of expertise, you're an amateur and you do not want to be called an amateur because what happens is when you leave that appointment, they're like, okay, well, we need someone who can really sell our home. That was great, but we need someone who can do the job, right? Now, being nice and classified as nice is you build a lot of trust. You talk about story, you talk about their kids or their dog. Like a lot of times I'll walk in, they're like, what's your kid's names? I'm like, I start with my daughter, Stella. And they're like, oh, my dog, Stella. Well, that's great. It builds trust. It's a great name and everything else. But I don't give them any expertise. I don't talk about the right information that speaks to them. I'm just nice. And the worst thing you can do as an agent, the worst, is you leave and they're like, Oh, Christina was nice, but we need to make sure we can get someone who can sell our home. She was nice. You don't want to be nice. Nice is great to some degree, but that's not going to get you listings. That's not going to get you everything you need. And then of course you do not want to be arrogant. Now, some people do really well. They're just naturally arrogant. That's okay. Right? Because there are people in the world that are high D's and need that arrogance to kind of function. I can switch over very quickly to, I don't, I don't like to call it the arrogant because I'm not arrogant, but I can switch over to the high D and get really focused and have that focused conversation because ultimately that's kind of who I am on the back end, but I am not arrogant. I tried to do the arrogant route when I was newer and it is not great. You, it doesn't work well, trust me. But if you're seen as arrogant, that's because you give them a lot of information and you kind of just blah everything to them. You just kind of spill it all. And they sit there listening to all this and they're like, okay, that was great, but whoa. You know, they're a little bit overwhelmed, but they didn't feel like you built any trust with them. And real estate agents already have a problem with trust. So we need to build trust. So if you're just being the expert all the time, you're not asking any questions, you're not listening to them, you're going to be arrogant and they're not going to want to work with you. Now, to become irresistible, you need just the right amount of expertise and just the right amount of trust. When you put those together in the right little package, you're irresistible. Here's the coolest thing that happens. Who has validated a listing appointment that they will sign with you before you even showed up or met them? This is what I do, right? I set the listing appointment a week out and then I give them information every day. And I show them everything. I send them, I don't do a listing presentation in the listing. I do a pre-listing package. Then I send them all the articles about me, all my awards. If you don't have that, I help agents create a way of showing their success if they don't have any, right? There's ways of doing that, but you got to send them stuff. But then you got to ask them, ask the question, 
right? Are you ready to work with me? If I walk in on Friday, will you sign that listing agreement with me? If not, what's, what's the hesitation? If you don't ask these questions, you don't know. And then when you ask the question, which I got, they said, we love you, but my husband has hesitation and doubt. What's the hesitation? You have to ask the questions. Well, they want to make sure you are selling homes in the area and this and that. So I sent all the homes that I've sold, right? I also, on top of that, gave them a reference for a client where I just sold three properties for him. I helped, actually, I helped him buy a home in the luxury area. I sold his home and he loved me so much. He was like, Coco, will you sell my rental? So I did three homes in three months for this client. And I gave it to this potential lead and I was like, call him and talk to him. He is, he will tell you, I just did a ton of deals. So if anybody has any bad things to say, he'll have it, right? And I went through this validation process. By Thursday, I connected with them. They told me, bring the listing paperwork. We are okay at your 4% package. We just have a few questions. We just want to go through the process, but we have no problem signing. I didn't even do a listing presentation. Nothing. This is where irresistible get. They've been watching me for years. They see all my different information. She's heard of me. I've been around. They know me in the area. This is where you build your brand. So make sure that you really are looking to be irresistible. Now, do you see why becoming irresistible is so critical to your success? Irresistible is created through your brand, starting with your niche and your ICA. So let's do a really quick review. The right words make you irresistible. You don't need more leads, please. You need better leads, right? Using the agent branding framework as a marker towards irresistible. Keep checking on that and be like, how do I feel? How do people feel? Ask the question when you don't get a listing or a buyer. Be like, honestly, hey, I'm okay. You went with Susie. She's fantastic. But can I just ask, so as I'm growing, where did I miss the mark? What was it about me that wasn't quite right? And I appreciate any and all feedback. It won't hurt my feelings. I say this all the time. Right now, I don't get as many where I miss it. But like in my coaching business, if someone doesn't want to buy like my premier coaching or something, I ask them those questions. What was it about it that you didn't like? You have to ask and get feedback so you can grow. It's, it's really important. So imagine what your life can be if you had, I'm going to say two times as much money right? Right. Double the money that you're making now. You're working half the time and you're able to travel on your vacations. You're able to take November to January off and just spend time with your family. If you have kids, you get to go to all their school events. You pick them up, you help them with homework. You do all the fun stuff with them. Imagine what your life can be if you did this. If you are working 15 hours a week, you help, you work with 20 leads a year. How life-changing. That's how important it is. Keep that in mind as you go through this. Don't let this be your future. You don't want the lack of closings because that's frustrating for everybody. You don't want the lack of perceived value because if you don't have value, you're a commodity and that means they can buy from anybody. And you don't want to discount your commission. I don't care what anyone says. A buyer's agent and a selling agent, we do two different jobs at the same level. It's just as hard doing a buyer's as a buyer's agent as it is as a listing agent. And I do both. People sometimes don't realize I do both. And they're like, oh yeah, I, I hate giving commission to those buyer's agents. They don't do anything. You know how it is. We're listing agents. And I'm like, well, actually I do both consistently. <laughs> so it is hard. Do not discount your commission. Your worth is your value. So you have to believe in yourself to start with. Here's my Instagram page. Scan the QR code, take a picture, follow me on Instagram. You are more than welcome to DM me and ask me questions. Tell me, hey, I'm thinking this. What do you think? If I can help you at least jumpstart all of this and you're just getting in your mind where you want to go with it, that would make me so happy because this is where it starts. And I want you guys to have a good start wherever you are in your business. So let's move forward with action. Here's what I want you to do. In the next couple of days, I want you to think of your ICA, your ideal client you want to work with. Look past or look create something new if you don't like who you've been working with. At the same time, I want you to define your niche. I want you not to be broad and broad or narrow and broad. I want you narrow and narrow. I want it pushed in. 
So when I say narrow and narrow, that means your ICA is really narrow and your niche is really narrow and they mesh together. Taking action will equal success and it comes quickly. I am seeing people getting results in the first couple of weeks. So I want you to get out there and just put the work in and start doing it. Here's my Instagram again. I am open for questions. So if you have questions, just go ahead. Let's go ahead and do, let me, I'm going to have to do it this way. Um, let's put your hand up. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer um, any of them. All right. So I have a question on how you manage your task lists. Um, yeah. Yeah. So task lists mean like my to-do list. Yep. Okay. I look at to-dos very, very different. Um, I do not have more than three items a day. If you make a to-do list that is a hundred items long, that is called, that is called overwhelm and your brain can literally go crazy. Now I am a full-fledged agent, meaning I'm in production. I'm still working. I'm also growing my speaking and training business. So I've been traveling around doing that. That's a whole nother business. Then I have my agent brand Academy, which is my um, whole training program, which has three levels. We're growing out and everything else. I'm a mom of four. I have rental properties. I keep my house and everything else. You can imagine my to-do list can be a thousand long very easily. I pick three things every day. All I do is I work until I complete those three things. They must be three things that move your business forward. That's it. So my house, if my house is filthy, I don't care. It can be cleaned later in the day right? Like if I want to do something special, it can be done later in the day. The only thing I do in the mornings is I always go and exercise because my health is important. And then after that, I do my three things. So for real estate, it may be like, so today I have four appointments after this call, I have four more appointments until noon and I still have to write an offer. So I'm going to prioritize that offer is important. Why? Because that puts money in my pocket. So I am going to squeeze every minute to make sure that gets done. I won't stop working today until I write that offer. So it should be writing an offer. It should be getting back to clients who are actually committed and signed an agreement with you. It should be, um, maybe you're like, I really need to start posting more or finding my ICA. Just pick three. And then you can have sub ones if you finish. But I really only do three and that's it. I let the rest go. And then if it's cleaning or whatever, I do it when the kids are around because who cares? They're making noise. I can do dishes. I can do other things. But make sure you're focused on the most important things. I hope that helps. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to say your name wrong. Is it Tao? 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 Toy. Toy. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, Coco. Thank you. This was a lot of good, great stuff. I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to take everybody's time. But the first thing is uh, you caught my attention. 5.5 yield percent interest. What, what do you have you using for that one? Yeah, so that's a great question. So there's two of them out there. BMO Alto is one that we're using. And the other one is Wealthfront. And the reason I put the money there is I need liquidity, right? So um, <clears throat> if I want to make an investment or I want to do something, I can grab at it, but I'm making... So I think Alta, I think BMO is 5.25 or something. And then with Wealthfront, I have, I have a code and so with that code, I get 5.5% um, for like six months or something on it. So um, be creative in how you save your money. That's really, really important. Make sure you have liquid money, but don't just spend it all. Everything you say makes sense. And I've been learning a lot of di different branding. I understand the value and importance. And I struggle with this so much. I try to brand myself as the as is realtor um, okay. to help, you know, people sell their house as is. Again, I I struggle with narrowing it down even more because there's different parts of that. There's pre-foreclosures, there's probates. And I don't, I feel struggling when I niche down even more because probate does more. There's more probates than pre-foreclosures. There's more than divorces. And, and I want to do all of that. But my past, I have tons of first-time home buyers, but I don't want to work with a lot of first-time home buyers. And like you said, I'm giving away a lot of my commissions. I'm I'm the nice realtor. Um and I don't want to be that anymore. I want to do what I want to do luxury, but as is realtor and luxury, they don't mix. The language doesn't mix. So how do I do more? How do I get more by doing less? Like what is your service and what do I got to do to do all that? Well, message me on Instagram for sure. We'll talk more, but let me address, because here's what I find with a lot of people. So 
I am the queen at understanding and reading people and seeing what's going on in the back end, right? So you said a couple of things that triggered. It's like, um, I think you said that you want to be as is, but probate sells more. But then what if you did this? But then what if you did this? So in your mind, your brain's thinking, but if I don't do all these different things, I won't make money because I'm going to miss out on this one. I'm going to miss out on that, which is FOMO, right? You don't want it. So here's what you have to do. And this is what I do every day because I'm not joking. I'll, I don't scroll a lot on Instagram, but when I do, it's like leads, leads. And sometimes my heart sputters and it's like, you need more leads. And then I have to be like, no, you don't. No, you don't. So you need to decide. I did probate for a while. If you want to do probate and you like that, do it. Probate was too sad for me. I could emotionally, it was too hard on me and I didn't like it because I was crying more than they were. So you need to find one of those areas that you like. If you want to be the as is guy, then you need to narrow it down to the as is what. And then the wording has to be very specific, like leave your home. So here's what I would do. I would brand it out and I'd create a cool little book that I would give away. And I would say, look, leave everything, everything, everything. Take what you want, leave everything. I will get the house emptied out. I will get it ready to go. But you have to be clear with them. As is, you will not get $2 million if the home is as is. It's only going to be 1.3 because here's what's going to happen as the as is guy. They're going to expect that you're going to get them a high price or they see their neighbor who sold at 2 million and they're going to be like, I want 2 million. And you have an uphill battle now because you have to well, tell that's them. Yeah, well, that's why I wanted to do that because I can dip in the front and also dip in the back and educate them like you said as well. Exactly what you said. I can I can do this but you won't make as much. Let's see what you can get on the open market if I was to help you rehab the house and this and that. So I was gonna do both of that at the same time to you know give them benefits of that. So, is that okay or is that too much? Yeah, no, that's it's fine. So the question is, if you're gonna be as is, so I see where you're going now. If you're gonna be as is with uh, flippers, I think that's where you're going, then you need to be the as is with flippers. Meaning that I bring a client who's gonna give you an all cash offer in three days. It's a hard thing to do, I'm telling you, but if you do it really well, you can make a lot of money because flippers will pay you an extra percent and so on, right? And you get to sell it. If that's not where you're going to be, then you need to be very clear on your wording. If you're going to be the as is who takes it to market, then you're the as is to the market. But you need to figure it out and narrow it down. Does that make sense? It has to get more narrowed. You cannot be so general and you can't play in multiple buckets because the wording gets weird. And then people are like, he's as is what? And then they're like, that's weird, right? When I say I'm the buying and selling expert, they know exactly what I am. It's the buying and selling expert at the same time. And then if they go, well, well some people ask me like, what do you mean at the same time? It's like, well, if you need to buy and you need to sell, but you don't have the money and you're trying to juggle two mortgages or figure it out, I got everything you need to make it seamless and I renovate your home. I do everything from point A to point Z. You do nothing. And this is why I get 4%, right? So figure it out, but make sure guys, whatever you do, you make money. There's money to be made. If you're working for free, it doesn't help you in any way. And with the new NAR settlements and the buyer broker agreements, if you are negotiating a 1%, and they're offering 3%, you get 1%. So you need to be able to negotiate and be strong on your values and show them why you're worth the money, okay? But message me in Instagram. We'll talk more for sure, okay? What do you think, Coco? Yes. So I think someone else had a hand. Um... Ty has a hand up. Ty, right. can you unmute yourself? Uh, yes. Hi there. Um, how do you get to your um, uh, Instagram page, Coco? Yes, there it should be on the screen. So I left it up. Do the QR code, or you can find me at Christina underline Kokoloyanakis. Um, you can find me there as well. But the in the code on the screen, if you can see the screen, um, you yeah. can just scan it, you'll find me. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm not able to how do oh, you scan right. them? How um, you scan let, me, them? let me do this. If you're in the chat, here I'll put it real quick. Okay. While well, you're really doing that, Christina, I think that one of the things that, that, that hits me with all this, like that one slide you had, I don't know, five or six slides ago, like the, the breakdown, like, like, again, focusing on like senior, like the seniors, the mm -hmm. way you, ha you know what I mean? Again, like, I think any of us, you, there, there's so much opportunity here to become an expert in whatever niche you want to pick to, to be, you know, pick as your niche. I mean, 
you can dive down deep into that and you can create books, you know, chat GPT and stuff, you AI stuff. We've been, we're doing AI the first Tuesday of every month. We've got a big AI class coming up here in a couple of weeks. You know, like there's ways to become just an expert in whatever niche you want to become an expert in and really hone in on that. And Ty, and Toy, I think about that for you too. I mean, just there's so, you know, when you find out what it is that you want to work and just to, I think it's about building that. And I think you're, what it is, you're creating a professional business. I think that's the problem with real estate realtors. I mean, and I think right now, one of the hard things is, you know, everybody's wanting more business. Everybody is down in business. So many people are down in business from where they were a year ago, two years ago, that it is real easy to start just, I need this. I'll take this. I'll take anything I can get. Like it just, it can become that. And that's okay. We got to take, you know, take care of the bills. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity to be diving into and building your niche, you know, because a lot of us are doing less trends. There is more time. Don't just, we got to be looking for more things, but at the same time, hone in, you know, and, and I think you can just become such an expert in that niche that, you know, at the end of this, you come out and gain big time market share is what can happen. And, and really, I want to really be clear with this because a lot of people are, they, they you have to look long-term. So um, in my program, I sell the five-year plan. It's part of my like robust program. I have Because if you don't understand where you want to be in five years and you don't backtrack it, understand what you're doing daily, we get stuck in a, we get stuck in this like um, hamster wheel and we don't realize we're stuck there. And then all of a sudden five years go by and everyone's like, I'm still only making $50,000. And they're like, I'm still only felt like I can't figure this out. It's because we're not always shooting for more and more. Even during COVID, during, you guys have to understand, I have built this brand. Everyone's really struggling. And I see that. That's why I want to support everyone. I'm giving a lot of my knowledge away for free, but I'm not struggling in any regards. I, I, it's not hard. And I want people to understand that it's, it takes time to build it. It's a struggle to get there, which is why I do offer coaching and I do help people. Once you get it and you're implementing it and you keep doing it every year, it's a snowball. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you're doing less and less work and it gets easier. And so when, hard, when um, times get hard, it just gets easier. So I really want to encourage you. Yes, you have to pay the bills. I'm very big on that. So like if you're taking deals right now, you're not loving or you're discounting because you really need the money. Do what you need to do to make the money. Hone in on the conversations. Make sure you're really putting time and effort to people who are actually going to buy with you. I'm very, nobody now asks me, but in the beginning, after my couple of years, I'm like, I'm not discounting my commission. And a lot of times I got asked that because I'm working with muddy leads. So what I would say up front is I don't discount my commission. So if that's going to be anywhere in this transaction of a problem, I'm not the right agent for you. Put it up front. Say it up front. It, I don't know why agents are so afraid. The worst thing is you spend six months with somebody, you're ready to write an offer because it's happened to me. And they were like, okay, I want 50% of your commission. I go, well, I'm going to make like 15, I'm going to make like $3,000 at the end of the day with everything. I'll give you $1,500. She's like, no, I want $30,000 back. I go, I don't even make 3,000 on this transaction. It was like a $700,000 sale. And I'm like, where in your mind do you think? And she, I spent so long with her. I showed her so many homes and you have to understand those should be turning points in your brain where you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. So be upfront with them. If they're not the right person, yay, that's good. That means you're narrowing it down. Move them along. Find the people who love, love, love you. And by the way, the love, love, love people write you great reviews and they send you a lot of people like them and it just gets better. So I know a lot of people are struggling, but if you can start putting this in effect now, get really focused, work on it, try it, fail at it, because failing is fun. I love it. I really do, because it tells me what I need to fix. If I don't know what I need to fix, how do you fix it? So get messy, get dirty, try stuff out, dust off your knees, get back up and do it again. And these hard times will get less and less for you. And you'll be like, I'm so glad I showed up on that call so many years ago because look at my business now. This is amazing. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Coco. Appreciate it. Um, guys, I want to remind you tomorrow, if you can come back in here, same Zoom link, same time, freedomteamzoom.live. Okay. You can go there anytime, freedomteamzoom.live. 
and you can come back in here. We'll be back here tomorrow and we'll be talking a lot about all this stuff and digging into more stuff. I mean, the, the collaboration on Wednesday has been awesome. The more people there, the more collaboration there is, the more ideas thrown out, the, the better we all do. So come join us tomorrow uh, if you can. Guys, the recording of this will be up uh, later today. So if you want to go back through a lot of information there, Coco, thank you so much again for pouring into everybody. We appreciate it. Okay. Seriously, you guys, have a great day. We're here for you. Thank Call you. us if you need us. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll see you. Bye bye.